Section 2, The Brain Before we talk about the ways the brain changes as we age, let's first get into how the brain works. One of the things you need to understand about the brain is that your brain's connections aren't determined by your genes, they're determined by your experiences. Before birth, your genes just direct some basic wiring patterns. After that, it's all about what you see, hear, smell, touch. It's about the words you're exposed to and the eye contact your caregivers made with you. Your brain is constantly under construction because it has so much plasticity. In other words, it has the capacity to reorganize itself and form new connections in response to your experiences throughout your entire lifespan. Because of this, the experiences that we have or fail to have as infants, children, adolescents, and adults are tremendously important to our development. Your brain has two halves or hemispheres each with four lobes that work together but have different primary functions. The frontal lobe controls voluntary movement, thinking, personality, emotion, memory, sustained attention, and intentionality or purpose. The occipital lobes control vision. The temporal lobes control hearing, language processing, and memory and the parietal lobes control spatial location, focusing attention, and maintaining motor control. <clears throat> All of these lobes together comprise the cortex, uh, which is the wrinkly cap that you probably think about when you think about the brain. There are some other structures deeper beneath the cortex that we'll talk about later, uh, such as the amygdala and the hippocampus. Neurons process information. They communicate with other neurons by releasing chemical substances called neurotransmitters. The dendrites of a neuron detect neurotransmitters, create an electrical signal that travels down the axon, um, and then they release their own neurotransmitters at the end. These neurotransmitters are detected by neighboring neurons, and the signal continues to get passed along, like a game of telephone. Most axons are covered by a myelin sheath a layer of fatty cells. Myelination is the process of encasing axons with a myelin sheath, improving the speed and efficiency of information processing, like insulating a wire. The process of myelination begins prenatally and continues long after birth. As it does, our brains become more and more efficient. Another aspect of brain physiology is lateralization. Lateralization means that one side of the brain is especially good at certain functions and the other side of the brain is especially good at other functions. For example, most but not all of your language processing takes place on the left side of your brain. Now imagine that you're about to go on a journey, but you don't know what you'll need. What would you pack? As much as possible, right? Will I need a swimsuit or a heavy coat? I don't know, better pack both. Your brain is the same when it comes to forming neural connections. During the first several years of life, the brain forms way more neural connections than it will ever need because it doesn't know what information is important and what isn't. This process is known as blooming. However, with time and experience, it starts to figure out what connections are important and which ones aren't. How does it decide which connections are important? By whether or not they're being used. When it comes to how your neural pathways form, it's literally use it or use it or lose it. So any connections that aren't being used are allowed to wither away and die, and that process is called pruning. That is what makes neglect so bad. Children who grow up in a deprived environment may have depressed brain activity. These two photos are, are PET scans, which uses radioactive tracers to image and analyze blood flow and metabolic activity in the body's organs. These scans show the brains of a normal child on the left and on the right an institutionalized Romanian orphan who experienced substantial deprivation since birth. In the PET scans, the highest to lowest brain activity is reflected in the colors of red, yellow, green, blue, and black, respectively. 
as can be seen, red and yellow show up to a much greater degree in the PET scan of a normal child than that of the deprived Romanian orphan. This is an extreme case, though. Fortunately, the brain demonstrates both flexibility and resilience. At least to some degree for some individuals, such effects are reversible. Uh, what wires or rewires the brain is repeated experience. During childhood, the brain and head grow more rapidly than any other part of the body. Some of this is due to new connections forming, and some of it is due to myelination. As the different areas of the brain grow and develop, children exhibit improvements in memory, learning, coordination, language, and emotional control. There are especially significant improvements in the circuitry of the prefrontal cortex, an area of the frontal lobe associated with cognitive control. That's why you can expect a group of third graders to sit and pay attention for longer periods of time than kindergartners. In adolescence, the brain is still growing, but with fewer, more selective, more effective neural connections than in children. The corpus callosum, a band of fibers that connects the brain's hemisphere, thickens, and this improves the ability to process information. So here you can see that the corpus callosum right here is that thick bundle of fibers connecting the two hemispheres of the brain. Uh, not all parts of the brain mature at the same rate, though. For example, the amygdala matures much sooner than the prefrontal cortex. What this means is that the part of the brain that processes emotion is working at full capacity, while the part of the brain that controls our passions is still catching up. The result is a period of time when adolescents have a tendency to make risky or impulsive decisions based on emotion instead of thinking things through first. The prefrontal cortex doesn't completely finish maturing until between 18 and 25 years old. By the way, that's one of the reasons why you often have to be at least 25 years old to rent a car. On average, the brain loses 5 to 10 percent of its weight between the ages of 20 and 90. Brain volume also decreases. The prefrontal cortex shrinks more in some areas, which is linked with a decrease in working memory. A general slowing of the brain and spinal cord functions begins in middle age and accelerates in late adulthood. Also, the production of some neurotransmitters declines. For example, reduction in acetylcholine is linked to memory loss, especially with Alzheimer's disease, and reduction in dopamine is involved in decreased motor control and Parkinson's disease. However, don't freak out. Dementia is the exception, not the rule. The brain loses only a portion of its ability to function. Although things slow down, we're usually still perfectly mentally capable in old age, especially if we stay physically and socially active. Aerobic fitness, for example, is linked with greater volumes in the hippocampus, which translates into better memory.